Hello and welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I'm Alicia and this is your weekly source for the best tips and tools for pain relief and feeling unstoppable. And today I want to talk about the habits that we all have that mold our fascia in certain ways that make us maybe prone to injury or tightness um, in certain patterns. So the things that I'm talking about one thing, I actually covered this in another video and we'll link to that right here, but um, that's the leaning on one leg thing, one leg phenomenon. So I did already cover that and that's going to be kind of the main habit that a lot of us have that creates fascial tightness on one leg. But then there are a lot of other things that we do and these are the kinds of things that I'm always looking for when I talk to the clients that come to me in person and I can kind of talk to you about and get you thinking about in your own life because if you can catch yourself doing these things and maybe stop doing some of them or most of them or maybe all of them, you're going to get way ahead of any of that tightness creating patterns and hopefully prevent injuries and not need to do as much mobility work to keep your fascia healthy. So what am I talking about? Well, besides the leaning on one leg thing, which you definitely need to watch out for and catch yourself if you're doing, the other things would be how we sit, how we sleep, um, and basically, you know, those are the main ones, but how we move in certain uh, areas of our life, or if you work, how you sit at your desk, or if you have a standing desk, you know, watching out if you're leaning on one leg or bent over, always using the same leg, those kinds of things. But here's where I'll tell you the number one thing that I see that men do um, that causes tightness on one leg sitting is this right here. They always go, for some reason, to one leg and this leg up. Um, I've caught a lot of men doing this in my private practice, in my office, and going, usually going to, let's say, the other leg feels really weird and usually like stiff, um, but this leg's been so used to doing that that it just falls down. Um, so that's one thing you men can catch if you do while sitting. Um, and then women, what we tend to do, and this is definitely something that I am guilty of and I am trying really hard to stop doing, um, is this right here. Either this, or this, or this. <laughs> but my left leg just wants to always be the bent one, um, the one kind of tucked in, and this one's just hanging out. So I have a lot more left leg tightness than I do right leg. And um, I've had historically knee issues on the left side, hip issues on the left side, a left glute that sometimes doesn't want to fire. And a lot of those habits, I believe, are what's causing that. So you may have something similar in your life. Um, so any of those types of things that you can catch are good. The other thing to think about, it's a lot harder to change though, is how you sleep. But if you always sleep, let's say, on your right side with your left leg curled up, <laughs> then again, that's just gonna shorten that left leg. Um, if you switch back and forth, that's totally fine because again, it's about balance and being imbalanced, especially in your legs, is gonna be the main thing that causes pain. So if you do happen to switch, that's fine. But a lot of people just pass out in one position, wake up in that position, and that's maybe eight hours you spent with that leg bend. So these are the kinds of things you wanna watch out for. And all of you parents out there, definitely watch out for if you always carry your kids on one hip. Um, if you are right-handed, a lot of the time it does tend to be your left hip, so you can do stuff with your right arm, um, but maybe it's your right hip. Um, so just make sure to watch that. If you're always doing this, I mean, not only are you doing the one leg phenomenon, but you're adding a child to it, so you're really weighting that leg down with a lot of weight, and it will definitely tighten up that entire left leg or right leg whichever you lean on. Okay, and then as far as the upper body goes, um, I just talked about the kid thing. If you're always holding a kid on that side, you're definitely gonna be tighter on that left arm, let's say, than the right. Um, that would be something to watch out for and a reason to try switching. Um, if you're at a desk and you're always using your right hand and you have carpal tunnel on that right hand, well, it's kind of no wonder. Um, if you can kind of switch it up, that would be ideal or at least move around throughout the day or use any of the techniques. I have a mobility mastery to release um, whichever arm you're using more. But uh, I guess another thing too, while sleeping, I've had a lot of clients um, tell me they always sleep on that arm. Um, and then they end up with like shoulder range of motion issues or shoulder pain. Um, so again, those are the things you kind of want to watch out for with the upper body. 
And of course, posture is going to ha uh, have a big role to play in fascial tightness and what's tight and what's kind of overstretched or over loose. So if you're like always slumped over, especially while sitting, then everything in the front is going to get super tight and everything in the back is actually going to get overstretched, but you're going to feel like the stuff in the back is actually over tight. So, you know, if you're sitting or standing around, it's best to have a good upright posture. Of course, most of us know this. We need to get better at doing it. The biggest culprit of all though right now is what I'm sure you can guess our phones. So we're always, especially with our heads bent over looking at our phones these days. And that is a huge, huge problem. That's going to lead to a lot of pain for people in their neck. It's an actual thing called text neck and I'll be doing a full episode on that at some point. Um, but again, so if you can hold your phone in front of you, that would be ideal. All these little things, if you can catch yourself and change them, you will be doing a lot to prevent pain. Uh, one other quick thing just to add into the mix is driving. Um, if you drive a lot and you're always, you always have your left arm up, for example, it's going to tighten up up here. Um, I've noticed this huge pattern in most of my clients where most people have a bigger, let's say, knot on the left side of their shoulder, but their scalenes, this um, kind of like deeper neck tissue on the right is often tighter. And I think that's from driving where people are looking in the rear view mirror um, and holding the steering wheel oftentimes with the left arm. So it's just kind of interesting, but also lower body. If you drive a lot or you drive for work, you're going to have lower body issues, mostly related probably to that right side or potentially low back pain on the opposite. Now this is a huge topic and I will be going more into depth on each of these parts in future episodes. And I uh, just wanted to start the conversation about this topic and get you aware of these things. So if you liked it, like it. And for the full blog post, click the link below and I will see you next time on Mobility Mastery Monday.